uh, which is going to lead right up to my interview today with Eric Phelps. And that's a story uh, regarding the Vatican Bank and a lawsuit going on in uh, the federal courts in San Francisco as we speak. Now, the, the headline reads this, Vatican lawyers claim Nazi regime violated no laws in genocide of 500 Serbs and Jews. A November hearing is set in federal court in an ongoing lawsuit of Alprin v. Bat Vatican Bank. The Vatican Bank stands accused of post-war laundering of genocide profits. Now, Vatican lawyers, including Pope Benedict's personal attorney, recently argued, and this is an argument, listen to this crazy argument, and I want to get Eric's opinion uh, uh, on this, that genocide committed in Croatia during Second World, the Second World War by a Nazi regime with complicity by the papacy was permissible under international law. Do you hear that? Permissible. The outrageous argument was part of a motion in the ongoing lawsuit of Alprin v. Vatican Bank set for hearing in November in federal court in San Francisco. Now you can read that whole, I got the whole court case on my website. Go ahead and read it. And uh, read about what these people are, the retribution they're trying to get. And then come back to me and say the Vatican is involved with some nefarious actions that are, have been going on for hundreds of years and what is going on today. Eric, can you believe it? You know, even when you present solid documentation, people just, uh, you know, in places where they should be talking about it, just want to keep the story silent. I can't believe it. I'm very upset about it and want to get your opinion. How are you today? Good. good. Thank you for having me, Greg. And uh, your listeners, yes, that's typical of veteran rhetoric. Um, of course, they carried out their... Uh, crusade against, quote-unquote, the heretic Serbian Orthodox people that totaled at least 700,000 to a million, and they had their concentration camp, Jezanovic, which also was manned by Franciscans priests, and Jesuits were involved in this. So what they were doing to the Serbs and the Jews in, in uh, Serbia uh, where they were carrying out canon law, they were carrying out the Council of Trent, and they'll do it here again or wherever they can whenever they're permitted to. We also, well, have right two, we also have number two that I mean, Adolf Hitler put anti pavelic in power, and it was it was uh, um, um, Pavelic, and not not Pavelic, but uh, Pacelli, Eugenio Pacelli, a Secretary of State who who ratified the Concord Act with Hitler, with Knight of Malta Franz von Papen, who was Hitler's ambassador, Chamberlain to the Vatican, and so the Pope puts Hitler in power. Hitler brings Pavelic to power, and Pavelic carries out these things using Jesuits and Franciscans. Yeah, amazing. And uh, we can get. We're going to get into that. I just wanted to get you to comment about uh, the, uh, the the terror scare in England today, and what uh, what your thoughts are about that. I believe that um, the purpose for the terror scare is to frighten the British people into withdrawing from this quote unquote war on terror, even as was done in Spain. And we have to remember that the Jesuits, according to a particular email I received from a Stanford professor, uh, that he was, even though he was boohooing me on the position of the Jesuits, he said that indeed the Jesuits control all the transportation and the rail system in Madrid. And so the Jesuits also in control of LaGuardia Seville and other intelligence agencies in Spain. Set those bombs, blew the train, uh, killed two, over 200 people, and that brought Spain out of this crusade. I believe they're going to do the same thing with England. And the purpose is to what? Let us stand alone? The That's right. I mean, this has to be an America standalone war so that America, uh, the great Satan, quote unquote, which of course is run by the Jesuits, uh, this is a great haven, this is the sword of the church, that American people can be blamed for, I believe, the destruction of the mosques that have been planned for at least a hundred years when the American army will be blamed for the destruction of the mosques in Mecca, Medina, and Saudi Arabia, and for the mosques in Jerusalem. Uh, uh, Alaska Mosque and the Dome of the Rock. And when America was blamed for that, the Islamics will, will be war forever, as I have been told by certain uh, Muslims. Yeah, and the point is, you know, you can go and talk uh, uh, to millions of Americans who realize that the war on terror is really a war on our freedom, uh, but yet to uh, it stays in the realm of rhetoric. I believe the only way to stop it is to catch the real uh, culprits and to take away their money. Uh, which they use around the world trillions of dollars to bribe and to pass on uh, uh, these, I'll tell you what, to basically pass on the word of Satan all over the world. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Sure, and we have to remember that 
this whole war, this whole executive action, because it's not a congressionally declared war as a true war should be, it was caused by the World Trade Center fiasco, and the World Trade Center was brought down by Archbishop of New York, Edward Cardinal Egan, as he was in control of Knight of Malta, George J. Tenet, DCI at the time, who in turn oversaw the bringing down of the World Trade Center and the attack on the Pentagon so that they would have justification to wage this war. This is all a ruse. This is all a fraud. We should go back to see who caused this attack on the Pentagon, trace it to the Archbishop through our intelligence agencies, and then go right to George Herbert Walker Bush, one of the co-conspirators in the Kennedy assassination, because he is a Knight of Malta, along with his brother Prescott, and along with his father Prescott Sr., who was a partner with Fritz Thiessen, that German Knight of Malta, when they were running Union Bank out of New York City for the Nazis. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the, the ties of what's happening in this country go way back. And uh, that lawsuit we talked about at the opening of the show shows uh, the, uh, the involvement of the, uh, the Vatican rat lines, moving the Nazis through the Vatican uh, into uh, South America, into America. And what does it take for people to, uh, to really get it? We're going to take a break and uh, discuss that question uh, in four minutes on the Investigative Journal. Investigative journal, and if I was sitting in a court of law, I'd say right now it can be argued beyond a reasonable doubt that America is standing at the precipice, and the way to solve the problem is to out the Jesuits and to, two, get at the illegal trillions of dollars they're using uh, through their minions like George uh, Herbert Walker Bush and the rest of them. Uh, Eric Phelps is with me today, author of Vatican Assassins, uh, the third edition, 1,400 pages of research documentation showing you the true story behind the papacy and the true story behind uh, what he's going to get at right now. And that's this, basically, this uh, destruction first of the Jews, then the destruction of the Christians, uh, along with the Muslims, I might add. Eric, uh, I know you wanted to talk about a couple things in, uh, specifically today. Go right ahead. Yes, I wanted to talk. By the way, when you said that, that reminds me of a quote from from uh, Francis Xavier, and you find this in uh, uh, an ex-Jesuit's work called Rome Stoops to Conquer. In that book, uh, the ex-Jesuit says that Francis Xavier said, give me a world without Muslims and without Jews. And that was ex-Jesuit ex E. Boyd Barrett. Okay, now, <clears throat> what concerns me as of late are two things. The first is this continual agitation of blaming the New World Order on the Jews. And I would like to address this this uh, doctrine, this teaching, that it goes right back to the Jesuit order. And if we look into the uh, bi-weekly periodical of Rome put out by the Jesuits called the Civilta Catolica, which Michael Collins Piper quotes on a regular basis, favorably, we will see that the Jesuits have put out this uh, doctrine of a world Jewish conspiracy. And I quote from a book written by David Kirshner, who is just a Jew. He's a Jewish investigative journalist in a book called The Popes Against the Jews. And he was able to get in the Vatican archives, and he dug out these old issues of La Civilta. And uh, we see in this particular quote here on page 143 of his book, as he quotes the Civilta, he writes here, or the quotes the Civilta, which says, quote, the whole Jewish race, is conspiring to achieve this reign over all the world's peoples. And the Savilta goes on to call this the Jewish question in Europe. So this whole concept of the Jewish question was put forward by the Jesuits, which later is called by their Nazis the final solution to the Jewish question, originating first with the Jesuits. So this doctrine of the Jews wanting a world kingdom ruling over all the peace of the world is Jesuit coming from the La Civilta Catolica. It is also repeated in Mein Kampf, which was not written by Adolf Hitler. It was written by uh, certain agents of the Jesuits, one being uh, Father Bernard Stempfel, who was a priest of the Order of St. Jerome, according to ex-priest Leo Lehman in his book Beyond the Dictators. And so the Jesuits repeat this rhetoric, and we see it repeated even more now by certain men like Tex Mars. Tex Mars is saying that the first beast of Revelation 13 is a Jewish world empire and that the second beast is the American empire acting as its enforcer or as its sword. And so I would like to uh, respond to that by bringing a retort and uh, reply that this is absolute propaganda in light of the facts.
And the first thing I want to point out is that Rome is the, is the city that's built on seven hills. It's that city of Revelation 17, 18, which says, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Well, that great city sits on seven hills. And those hills are, according to any histor history book on Rome, are as follows. The first hill is named Vatican Hill. The second is Quirino Hill. The third is Verminio Hill. The fourth is Esquiline Hill. The fifth is Calian Hill. The fifth is Palatine Hill. The seventh is Aventine Hill. In fact, the Knights of Malta, they have their headquarters up on the, on the Aventine. But we see these seven hills uh, of Rome with specific names, and they have these historical names that go back for centuries. To the contrary, Tex Mars and others are saying that Jerusalem is built on seven hills. The Jerusalem of uh, Revelation 11.9 uh, is built on seven hills. Well, that's not true. According to the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, of, uh, written in the 1920s and 1930s, there's about five or six volumes to that, it describes Jerusalem as having been built on a plateau, and on that plateau are, seven, are five small hills. There are five small hills, not seven. And the five small hills are denoted as follows. The first, the southwestern hill. The second, northwestern hill. The third, northeastern hill. The fourth, is central eastern hill, which is called uh, Mount Zion. The fifth is the southeastern hill, called Acre. So there are five hills that are described historically related to Jerusalem, not seven. And this, therefore, is a major mistake by making Jerusalem that great city which rules over the kings of the earth. And that is simply not true. The great yeah, city you know what I want to do is just, just mention Tex has been on my show, and he's, also, uh, he's always welcome. So I want to ask him about that. He'll come on and talk. So uh, just to let you know that we, uh, on this show, we just let everyone get on and talk. Mm -hmm. We've had Michael Collins Piper on mm -hmm. uh, with you debating this issue. So it's uh, basically should just get out there so people hear uh, uh, hear the facts and right. make up their own mind. Go That's ahead. exactly right. Our, our purpose is to uh, hold to our position, and each faction can put forth their position, and the people have to ultimately decide. So, uh, again, Jerusalem's on five hills, not seven. There's no historical documentation that says they're on seven. Jerusalem, uh, Rome is on seven, full of historical documentation. And thus, Rome rules the world. And now this leads to another issue. Who rules, Jeru who rules Israel? Well, Israel is ruled by the Vatican. Israel was established by the Vatican, and the Pope's Masonic Jewish labor Zionists work with the Nazis during World War II in the ultimate creation of Masonic Jewish Zionist Israel. That was that the revision of Zionists had no hand in, and not, not any real true Jewish patriot had a hand in, or wanted to, or could able to establish. And so that we see in a book written by Ben Hecht called Perfidy that these Masonic Jewish Zionists like Chaim Weizmann and David Ben-Gurion with their agents Rudolf Kastner worked together with Colonel Adolf Eichmann and Colonel Kurt Becker in the sending of 400,000 Jews to Auschwitz. That is a historical fact. Yep. And so we see the connection between the high-level SS and what later became the Masonic Jewish Zionist government of Israel uh, controlled by the Mossad. Interesting. And we're going to get into the particulars in the second half hour. I just wanted to mention, though, that uh, when I started researching this maybe 20 years ago when I was a reporter in Rome uh, working, uh, I'm a Polish Catholic. And, I mean, the last thing I wanted to do was find out that the hierarchy of my church was corrupted. Uh, but I did want to get at the truth. And, all, like I said, after 20 years of doing this uh, on and off, all roads lead to Rome. At least all roads need to be exposed to figure it out. And I found once I started to get serious about this and do this, boy, did I get leveled. I was called everything from a, uh, a Jewish sympathizer to a KGB agent working for the Mossad. And I just wanted to go on the record to say that I'm just a Polish Catholic boy from Chicago, Illinois, who wanted to find out the truth about his own church. I'll be back in four minutes on the Investigative Journal. With Eric Phelps, author of Vatican Assassins, uh, third edition, and he's uh, outlining uh, basically the Vatican strategy in Jerusalem and all over the world. And before we get to that, I, I know you want to finish that. I just wanted to get your comments because Chertoff, uh, Michael Chertoff, head of Homeland Security, just announced that it appears the terrorist plot in London was foiled and it appears to be, they know this already, that it was caused by Al-Qaeda 
the same group uh, that caused the World Trade Center attack. So I just wanted to get your comments, uh, because I think if we find out who, who uh, the real boss of Chertoff is, uh, beyond his temporal bosses in the White House, uh, we may get to the truth of this story. Go ahead, Eric. Well, Michael Chertoff is just another one of the Pope's Masonic Jewish labor Zionists. His, his allegiance is to Rome. If his allegiance was not to Rome, he would have never been appointed to his position that he holds now. So um, what happened is, in London, is he was right. The same people that were behind the World Trade Center were behind uh, this purported uh, almost London bombing, and, and that is the Vatican. And the Vatican does everything. The Jesuits rule the Vatican. The Jesuits control Prodeo or their, their intelligence community by using all the intelligence communities at their disposal. And that includes British MI5 and MI6. So MI5, I'm sure, was involved in the, in the using of certain Arab Muslims that they deliberately brought into the country, like they have done here, so that they, in turn, can blame them for whatever terrorist, quote-unquote, event might happen, when, in fact, it's the British intelligence that's bringing it to, about, as is done here, when they used, uh, when they used certain Muslims to shoot Rabbi Kahani uh, several years ago, and then they brought those, the CIA took those Muslim assassins right out and delivered them back to Egypt. So the CIA uses their Islamic, Masonic, uh, uh, international terrorist network to do the bidding of the Jesuits, but then they're able to blame it on the Muslim people. And what happens really is in the mainstream media, what the majority of Americans still hear when they're not busy working five jobs to still make a living, right. uh, what they hear is that Al-Qaeda and the Muslims are to blame. But, you know, when you get farther, I think the Jesuits are smarter than that. They realize there's going to be a group of Americans who aren't going to buy that. And so what they have to do then in the, in the other form of the media, they have to then spread, and I just want to get your comments. That's my opinion. They then spread that if it isn't just Chertoff and Bush, it's, they're orchestrated by the Council on Foreign Relations who are controlled by the evil Jews in Israel. That's right. And that's what you hear. Uh, to those Americans who won't accept the fact that it's just uh, uh, the temporal powers doing it. And yeah. that's just orchestrated by them, and I'm convinced of it, but right. I can't prove it. Uh, well, I'll it's help just you. an opinion that we must, we must decide, uh, we must look at it. Go ahead. I'll help you. Remember, number one, according to the book of Luke, according to the Lord Jesus Christ, we are in the times of the Gentiles, and Jerusalem is trodden down by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And Luke 21, 27, that ending of the times of the Gentiles will be with the physical return of the Lord Jesus Christ to Jerusalem when he then again will rule, uh, when he will rule the world from Jerusalem after he judges the nations. So since we're in the times of the Gentiles, we live under Gentile rule, pursuant to the Bible and also the facts support that. For example, the CFR, although Tex Mars and others are absolutely right, is loaded with Jews. Many Jews in every administration for the last 60, 70 years have came right, come right from the CFR. But let's take a close look at the CFR and who's really in it. Well, we see Joseph A. O'Hare. Joseph A. O'Hare is a presider by David Rockefeller in the CFR. Joseph A. O'Hare resides in New York City. Joseph A. O'Hare helped in the election of Michael Bloomberg to be mayor of New York City. That Masonic Jew who's a member of the CFR too. And who is Joseph A. O'Hare? Joseph A. O'Hare is one of America's most powerful Jesuits. Jesuit of the Fourth Vow. Former president of Fordham University. This guy is a man of power, and he is a presider in the CFR. And there's no organization that the Jesuits are part of that they do not control. Wherever they are, they rule. And so they rule the CFR. And therefore, who is the real head, the open, visible head of the CFR? Why, it's Edward Cardinal Egan out of New York City, the most powerful archbishop in America. He rules the CFR, and he has men like George J. Tennant, that Knight of Malta, that are in the CFR, and former DCI, responsible for bringing down the World Trade Center. The CFR is run by the Vatican, but they have all their front Jews in the CFR to make it look to the American people that the Jews run this country. Yeah, and that's the real scary thing. Thing because what's happening is a lot of, and I say this uh, very bluntly, that uh, one, you know, it, we owe it to the American people in the world to get to the bottom of this story as our last, uh, as a last stance against the new world order, who uh, operate by deception, by doublespeak, and I'll tell you what, uh, they can take one's life, 
uh, they can take it in body, but they can't take it in spirit. And I vowed, uh, as a journalist, to go get to the bottom of this story, if it be to my last dying breath. And uh, that, I believe, is the only way uh, <laughs> more Americans will stand up and demand the truth in all areas, and not a sugar-coated version of it, we will then stop them. If we can stop the top boys and we can stop their trillions of dollar booty, we may have a prayer to win this battle against them. And that's my opinion. I agree. I agree. And I admire you for that position, uh, Greg. Well, here's a couple other things to your listeners might be interested in. This individual named Edward Bennett Williams. Edward Bennett Williams was one of the most foremost men in Washington for probably 30 years. Edward Bennett Williams was a Knight of Malta. He was educated by Jesuits at Holy Cross. And one of the men on his debating team at Holy Cross was another Jesuit-trained individual, uh, head of FBI Division 5 and a CIA operative, whose name was Robert Mayhew, also involved with the Kennedy assassination. And so here we have Edward Bennett Williams, who has, has had a tremendous financial. He owned uh, the Baltimore Orioles and the Washington Redskins. He is a tremendous financier, or was a tremendous financier. He died in 1988. And some of his clients have been men like Robert Vesco, Jimmy Hoffa, uh, Frank Costello. So here we have the interface between the Knights of Malta and the, and the Mafia. Senator Joseph McCarthy, who was advised by that Jesuit Edmund Walsh, creating the hue and cry of anti-communism, when in fact a Jesuit tried communism. And uh, Reverend, quote-unquote Reverend, that wicked Senator Sun Young Moon. So here's this Edward Bennett Williams, who, after Lyndon Johnson was put in office by that assassination, carried on by the Jesuits, their CIA, and Robert Mayhew, and Bloomfield, and others, uh, Johnson offers Edward Bennett Williams uh, to be mayor of Washington, D.C. <laughs> but Williams refuses. These are the kind of men that run our country. They're behind the scenes, they're high-level mind nights of Malta, they're serving the Vatican, and uh, they're never talked about. Well, you know, we had a minute or two here before a break and then another last segment of about 11 minutes, so I just wanted to give you an idea of what time we have left. But just tell us, uh, you know, you were, draw you were making that point of how they uh, have uh, uh, devilishly uh, allowed or put Jews in a position, but actually these people, and, and I had Barry Chomish, a reporter on a, a couple days ago, and he was saying the same thing. He said, I've lived in my country for a long time, and basically the Vatican controls these leaders uh, who have sold out my people and are going to destroy my country. Um, comment on that. Well, um, Barry's a friend of mine. I spent some time with him when I was there in Israel the last time I went, and uh, he and I talked about this one evening, and he and I have a basic agreement that indeed the Vatican rules Israel, and that Juan Carlos is a major kingpin in the government of Sharon at the time. Of course, he's a Knight of Malta, Jesuit trained. And the important thing about Juan Carlos is he claims to be one of his official titles is King of Jerusalem. <laughs> and so Israel really is to the papacy the kingdom of Jerusalem that existed during the Dark Ages. Right. Let me, you know what? I don't want to uh, cut you off, so just uh, hold that thought. We're going to pick it up in four minutes on the Investigative Journal. Back in four minutes. <laughs> Oops, on through Vatican Assassins, third edition. And I, I cut you off there, Eric, and you're going to pick up uh, with that statement. We have about ten and a half minutes left, so enough time for you to finish up what you want to talk about. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so the, the Jesuits... <clears throat> They are the ones that have sought to aspire to universal empire. And I have this quoted in my book, uh, The Jesuit Conspiracy, The Secret Plan of the Order, that I put on CD, the 13 rare books. If the listeners have an opportunity to download, I think that's up on several sites. But on page 181, here's what the Jesuits say in their secret council in Sherry, Italy, in 1825. Quote, let us strive to combine the calmness of reason with the fire of enthusiasm. Christ, who saw the germ of so many splendid truths, teaches us that in order, quote, to make ourselves master of the strong man, his house and his goods, we must first bind him, unquote. Let us therefore become perfect in the art of loading the proud and the powerful with chains. Let us lay to heart this maxim as the rule of all our efforts, one sole authority, that of Rome. One sole order, that of the Jesuits. And since our age does not boast a single mind capable of aspiring to universal empire, 
For kings have enough to do to retain a hold upon their petty kingdoms, which are slipping from their grasp. Let it be ours to aim thus high, whilst empty heads are dreaming. Let not any opportunity escape us of observing what are men's tendencies. The better we know them, the more useful they will be as instruments in our hands. Let us at all events so conduct ourselves that our future glory may compensate for our present abasement. For whether our name be destined to perish or finally to prevail over kings and nations, let it at least be synonymous with the loftiest reach of greatness and daring which the world has ever seen or ever will see." Unquote. So the Jesuits have aspired to... Yes. So the Jesuits have aspired to world government. They are the ones behind the New World Order. They are the ultimate neocons. And they have their certain uh, coadjutors like George Herbert Walker Bush and his son, uh, George Bush, serving their purposes. And other men like uh, New Lewis Mortimer Bloomfield, if I can mention him for a minute. Sure, go ahead. Lewis Mortimer Bloomfield, of course, was a Jew. He was a, a very influential um, t attorney from Roman Catholic Montreal. And Montreal was the haven, the, the North American haven for the Jesuits to begin with. And this Lewis Mortimer Bloomfield was a knight of Malta. According to John Coleman's book, Conspirators, Conspirators Hierarchy, uh, the, the Committee of 300, Lewis Mortimer Bloomfield was also a CIA, involved with the CIA, involved with the FBI, involved with another bright brother knight of Malta named Robert Mayhew, who was head of the, uh, Division 5 of the FBI. But here, in Robert, in uh, Lewis Mortimer Bloomfield is involved with William F. Buckley in his oil uh, business, and his, uh, Lewis Mortimer Bloomfield is also involved with the creation of Israel and personal a bosom friend of, of, uh, of um, David Ben-Gurion. But here's the most interesting note that we see from an article in 1967 of Mr. Bloomfield. It says, Mr. Bloomfield, president of the Canadian branch of the International Law Association, will be the fifth Canadian to receive the award for outstanding work in aid of pioneering Israel. So he's a pioneer in creating Israel. And then it goes on to say, speakers at the testimonial dinner set for Tuesday include... Francis J. Smith, director of the noted Cody Institute of St. Francis Xavier University. Well, why St. Francis Xavier University? Because I have another article here in 1971 of September that says that uh, Louis Mortimer Bloomfield and his brother Bernard were great financiers of St. Francis Xavier University. So Bloomfield, this Knight of Malta, this Jew, this racial Jew, is tied to the Jesuits of Montreal and a kingpin in establishing the nation of Israel via David Ben-Gurion. <laughs> wow, what, what interesting. I hope you're going to have that all in your, uh, the latest edition, which yes, is coming out shortly. Yes, it will be. You know something? Uh, we do have about, oh, maybe seven minutes. Uh, I wanted to, to ask you one question uh, and then to go on and get your final thoughts. Uh, how do you see this whole... You know, the, we know what's going on in Lebanon now. We know the violence is escalating. Uh, how do you see this playing out? Just uh, give us your, your thoughts from all the research you've done about how America stands uh, right now at the precipice of, of perhaps uh, eventual destruction. Go ahead. Well, <clears throat> as I have said uh, several years ago, and I still believe it to be true, that <clears throat> this is America is the last haven of what was once religious freedom, what was once a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant nation, enjoying historical rights of freedom of conscience, freedom of speech, freedom of press, and freedom of gun ownership. Now, the majority of anti-communists in the world are in this country. The majority of liberal Roman Catholics in this country who do pretty much what they want to do and believe in freedom of speech and gun ownership are in this country. Therefore, this country is poised to be brought down to destroy the Lord's Protestant Reformation. When this country is finished, the Reformation is over. So therefore, I believe that the Jesuits have fomented this war between two peoples they want to destroy. They want to destroy the Muslim peoples using their own Muslim leaders, and they want to destroy the American peoples using their own leaders. And so they have fomented this war through the 9-11 fraud using the Knights of Malta to the end that they're going to indeed uh, detonate nuclear devices in this country, as they have said they would, and then blame it on the Muslims so they can have a huge war in the Middle East to explode, and also that they're going to use nuclear devices in the Middle East to bring down the mosques in Mecca and Medina, 
and then be then have America be blamed for it when in fact it will be the bin Laden family that does it because they're CIA and therefore when that happens then it will be a perpetual war between the Muslim peoples in the US and I call it the Sino-Soviet Muslim invasion whereby the Muslims will unite with the Russians the Soviets because the Cold War has never been finished and the Chinese to invade our western coast and our southeastern coast through Cuba into Miami so I believe that's the scenario they have for America as a result of this exciting this war. Israel will benefit. There will be many Jews who will be killed, but the Jesuits don't want to kill all the Jews because they use the Jews as a buffer so that they can rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem is everything to the Jesuits, everything to the Vatican. And so now that it's in Jewish hands, the temple can be rebuilt. It could never have been rebuilt if it remained in Muslim hands with the Dome of the Rock there. So I believe this is the scenario that the Jesuits have with this, I call it the third 30 years war, as I mentioned previously, that Newt Gendrick in April of this year said that this war will last between 30 to 50 years. Now just uh, for point of reference, the Temple Mount is owned by the Vatican? Yes, the Temple That's Mount right. Temple Mount was deeded to the Vatican in 1993, according to La Stampa newspaper, and uh, shortly thereafter, uh, the Vatican recognized the nation of Israel where it had refused to in the past, even though secretly it built it and established it. So what would be your advice in our last couple of minutes to people here in America when they feel helpless uh, to what's going on? What would be your advice to them? Because many people have told me, uh, Greg, are you going to stay to the grisly end? And I say, yes, I've decided, thought about leaving, but I don't uh, think there's a safe haven in this world anymore. And the best place to put up our last fight would be right here. That's right, and I agree with you. In fact, I thought of leaving a couple of years ago, but <clears throat> the Lord brought me to the conclusion, I believe, for myself, that it's best to stay here and that we still have an open Bible that we can read and we still have our guns. And so therefore, uh, in believing that uh, the Bible is the Word of God and it teaches us that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that all men have sinned, that all come short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death, if we all get what we deserve, we're all going to go to hell. But by the grace of God, Jesus Christ tasted death for every man, that he did indeed die for our sins according to the Scriptures, was buried and rose again, he's coming back. And so therefore God calls all men everywhere to repent and to truly believe this blessed gospel. And when you do, you are now indwelled by the Spirit of God and you now have the power to resist the devil in his mystery of iniquity. And it's therefore in this position of being in Christ, as you seek his face and you pray to him, that he will indeed answer your prayers and he will intervene for us. And this is my great prayer, that God would begin to intervene for us against these terrible workers of iniquity who have destroyed our country, got us in a hundred years of war, war, wrecked us financially, wrecked our population, and uh, that he indeed might intervene for us as we seek to do his will. And just in our last minute here, we're, we're coming on the end of the show, the people that work for them, you know, these temporal coagitators as you call them, where do they th how do they think they're going to get away? I mean, when the, when the really the you-know-what hits the fan, where are they going to go in these bunkers they've built? Some of them, uh, the rest are, uh, n regard themselves as soldiers, and therefore they're under extreme oath, and they don't care if they die. Okay, good, Eric. We're all out of time. Uh, we'll have you on again. Thank you for your comments. Uh, thanks again. Thank you, Greg, and thank you for your listeners.